الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على السيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمته يا رحم الرحمين جزاك الله خير for uh, tuning in I wanted to thank MCC for doing all the technical part in uh, Miftah Institute for broadcasting this and putting this program together جزاك الله خير for all your hard work and especially our beloved brother Abdul Wahab Mufti Abdul Wahab who uh, has been uh, in contact and such a blessing. Um, may Allah bless him and his family and, and all of the people at Miftah who are working so hard uh, to do the best thing for this deen. We are uh, starting a, a new course and it's, um, it's an interesting course because uh, we're talking about one of the great uh, poets and uh, one of the great poets and teachers and masters and uh, thinker and visionaries in the history of Islam. As a matter of fact, not just in the history of Islam, but in the history of humanity. He is respected by uh, the East and the West. Do you mind closing the doors, please? Both of them. Um, so, one of the things that we learn in, in logic and when you start learning about the dean or if you go to university is called definition. Like how do you, when somebody tells you something and you don't understand it, you say define it. What do you mean by that? And that's the essential of, uh, um, the essential about foundation of language, foundation of conversation, foundation of comprehension, foundation of understanding. It's definition. You have to be able to understand what a, the other person is telling you. Majority of the uh, dispute and breakdown of the families is over definition. It's not over what they say. It's about misunderstanding and mistranslating what they're saying. That's why in English they said, you know, it was lost in translation, which means what this person said, this person didn't get. The hardest thing to define, one of the hardest thing to define is human being. Like, how do you define the most sophisticated creature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created? Because through the human being, through us, we get to know Allah. Right? We get to know Allah through ourselves. Right? And then we get to know ourselves through the light of God. And this is why Iqbal, rahmatullah alayhi, said, As hamak as kenaragir, sohbati ashina talab, ham as khuda khudi talab, ham as khudi khuda talab. He said, abandon everyone if you want to know yourself and if you want to know Allah. Abandon everyone and go to the one, the only one that knows you. The only one that knows you. The only one that knows you is Allah. Nobody knows you. You think your spouse knows you. You think your parents know you. You think your children know you or your colleague or your best friend. Nobody knows your reality. They only know what you allow them to know. But all the mysteries that is inside of us, only Allah knows that. Nobody else knows that. Allah knows why you shed that tear. You can tell people, oh, I was hurt. But the billions of cells that are just moving around to create that tear, Allah knows what you went through. All of that is known only to Allah. Allah knows your joy, the laughter, why you laughed, why you're happy, why you're sad, right? All of that, only Allah knows that. We only know at the superficial level where we say, oh, I was just, I was so happy. Okay, but we don't know really what was that happiness. So this has been the great uh, challenge of the human being in search of definition of what is a human being. Maulana Rumi, he tried to define it by saying, di sheikh ba charaq hami gash girdashar. Kazdi wudat malula mo insana mo rezus. He said the sheikh was going through the streets in the city with a light, with a flashlight, right? Or a torchlight. He said, I'm so sick and tired of all these animals. I want to find the human being. Where are the humans? In the city. And then they said, Goftam yof mi nashawa, just stay in They said, I don't think you can find the human being. We've searched everywhere for it. Can't find it. Guf on kiyof me nashawat on a marazus. He said, I want the one that you can't find. In other words, being a human is so rare. There's a lot of human being, 
But being a human is very rare to find. And this is why definition of the human being is very difficult. How do you define this creature? What Allah says, He says, Behold, O angels, I'm going to create a khalifa on this earth. So what is a khalifa? A caretaker, a maintainer, someone who cares, someone who loves, someone who cultivate the earth, take care of the animal, take care of the trees, make sure everything on this planet earth is fine and it's perfect the way Allah has created. That's what I'm going to make. That's the essence of the human being. Then the angel said, are you going to make someone who's going to do corruption and they're going to shed blood? See, they have their own definition. Allah has a definition. They have their de so Isn't this a person who's going to come and shed blood and they're going to do a lot of corruption? Allah says, In the alamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you don't know. Allah knows all of the definitions. Allah knows the essence of the human being. The angels don't know what's in our hearts. Nobody knows what's in the heart of a human being. Only God knows that. Right? Only we know and God knows. Nobody else knows our heart. I don't know what's in your heart. You know what's in my heart. Allah knows what's in my heart, what's in your heart. I only know what's in my heart. Right? And that's why we judge people based on the outward. Right? We can't say, oh, that person... We don't know. If a person is, I always get criticized for this because all my life since I was a child, if somebody was nice, I always thought they were nice. They said, no, oh, guy's evil. He's just pretending to be the, their shell. I said, I, I just see beauty. And I'm just going to act by the outward. I don't know. And we will read the story from Saadi that actually clarified that point and explains it. So, we come to the definition of the human being. What is a human being? So he has a poem that is actually in the United Nations. There's a, there's a giant carpet that was gifted from the uh, Persian, from Iran, to the United Nations. And it's hanging there. And next to this carpet, there's this poem in English written as the model of what does it mean to be a human being. And this is one of the masterpieces of Saadi Shirazi, who says, Bani Adam azai yak jigarand ke dar afarinish ziyak gawharan. He says, humanity, they are like one body. Imagine a human being as all human being as one single human. That's what he's saying. We're all like, all of us are like one human. Because in the creation, our essence is the same. We're all the same. Whether you're black, you're white, whether you're whatever you are, doesn't matter. We're all the same. The essence is one. Our essence is all one. Nobody has a different ruh than, oh, I have a spirit that's not from the same source that your spirit. No. All of the ruh came from the same source. Right? The same ruh. Rumi said, he said, the same spirit that came into Mary and Jesus was born, he said, that was the same spirit that came into you as well. He said, bring out the Jesus in you. Right? So it's, there's no difference in our essence. That we're all the same. We might be different in our color of our skin, our height, our hair. These are all furuat. These are, these are all what we call accident. There's a lot of accident. Colors are accident. Right? A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, Shakespeare said. It, you can't change a rose when you change its color, a white rose, a black rose, a green rose, a red rose, it's a rose. They're all roses. Because the rosiness is there. Got it? The rosiness is there. So he says, we are all like this one human. We're all, the, all of the human beings. So the Africa could be a hand. Asia could be another hand. Uh, Mecca could be the face, right? Like it's, all of it is body part. And then he says, he said, when one part from this whole body of human being is in pain. Give you an example. Have you ever had toothache? It's just a little piece like this big a tooth, right? You have toothache. Is this just your tooth hurting? Your entire body suffers from just toothache. So Saadi is saying that when one part 
of this human family is in pain, he said all of the limbs of that, that, that human family should feel that. Should feel the pain of the people in Afghanistan if you're here. Should feel the pain of people of Kashmir if you're in, in Zimbabwe. Doesn't matter where. If you're a human being, you should feel the pain of other people. Right? And the least you can do is make dua for them. Some people can do things. They can donate. You know, there's a lot of refugees. People are helping. The other people make dua. And at least you feel like, subhanAllah, you know, when there was drought here in California, we were, uh, you know, my kids at school, they were like coming and they were like, no, we make sure we make wudu, we get a cup. It was really nice conserving a lot of water because there was a drought. Once the drought finishes, and I was reminding myself and everybody that don't waste water because there's droughts everywhere in the world. Don't waste water. Like have have that connection that there are people who are in need of water and they don't have water. So he's saying that if one part is in pain, every part of this body should be in pain. You should feel it. Have some type of feeling. And then he says, took as mehnati digaron bihami, nashoyat kinomat nahan odami. He said, Oh, you who are free from the pain and suffering of other people. He said, You don't deserve this beautiful title called the human being, Benny Adam. It's a title. This is the greatest title a human can achieve. It's higher than a PhD. And this is what Mullah Jami, in a, in a poem, he said, he said, son, he told his son, he had a son. It's a story of a father and son. And the son is really, he's, 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 he has no adab with his dad. But he becomes like, a, he becomes the hakim, the ruler. He becomes all this stuff. And then he's trying to humiliate his son. Right? He goes to his father. He goes, Father, come. You used to tell me that I'm not even an Adam. I'm not even a human. Look at me. I'm the Hakim of the city. Look at, look at my house. Look at my servant. Look at all these people doing ta'zim. Look at my education. Look at my degrees. He said, he looks at him. He said, I, I never told you you won't become a Hakim. I said, Gufna may join the Padar to Adam Nashari. I said, Oh, my beloved son, you won't become a human. And even that was a sign of not him being a human for dishonoring his own father, right? So that's the essence what he's trying to teach here is what does it mean to be a human being? He said, if you're free from the pain and suffering of other people, you don't deserve that title. Because that title does not come free. It comes with that verse that we have made you as a Khalifa on this earth. The definition of that is that you will be taking care of each other. You'll be taking care of the animals. You'll be taking care of the earth. you take care of your own body, your own self. This is the definition of a human being. So, he wrote many books. But in these books, uh, the most popular one is Gulistan, which means the rose garden or, or the garden. Gul is flower and in Stan, as you all know, like Pakistan, Afghanistan, Hindustan. Hindustan is la the land of the Hind. And, you know, although Pakistan is an acronym, people think it's the land of the Pak. It's not. It was actually made of each letter has a meaning. Uh, Punjab, P, and you know, each letter has a meaning. But anyways, uh, so generally, uh, the British are very smart. That's why they, they made that to, to sound like uh, they put this Stan at the end of it. So, anyways, uh, so you have Afghanistan, the land of the Afghan, right? So, Gulistan is a place where all these flowers grow, right? So, a, a rose garden. In the Gulistan is very unique. And, and he, um, he said, Darin Muddat Kemara Wakta Khushas, the Hijrat Shesadu Pinjau Shashas. Shishbu, sorry. Darin Muddat Kem. Mara waqt khush bud, ze hijrat shesad o pinja o shesh bud. He says that, I wrote this in the beautiful poem, he says, I wrote this book in year 655. Because a lot of the books, we don't know when exactly they were written. So that's why a lot of the poets, they write a poem when they, were, when they wrote it. So it, it's actually recorded uh, in, the, in the thing. So the Gulistan, uh, this book, this, this is not the Gulistan, this is actually a commentary on the Gulistan by Su, by. Uh, uh, Sudi, Sharha Sudi. So the Gulistan is very short. Like the whole book is like probably this much or less uh, because it's really the cream of, of poetry. And it's, it's what they call na uh, Nasr Musajjah. Nasr is 
prose, right? Nasrul Masajja is the type of prose that it, it doesn't have a wazin, like, like a poem, but it actually rhymes really well. You read it, it's, it's, it's really poetic. Uh, and he's, he is, it's called the greatest Nasr al-Masajah ever written in the history of Persian uh, literature. Uh, so this is really a, a, one of my favorite books in the Persian literature. In this book, he has uh, eight chapters. The first chapter is that Sirat uh, Apot Chahon, is advice or about the kings. And they always started with that because there's wisdom in that. If the kings are straight and good, the whole society is going to be instead of tranquility and peace. And if kings and rulers are corrupt, everybody suffers from it. And then the next chapter is on akhlaq al darwishan, is in the akhlaq or ethics or, or of the darwish. And then that's basically every all the citizens. So he's talking about that as a universal term. And then the next one is Fazilat uh, Qanaat and, and the uh, virtue of Qanaa, of contentment. And then Fawaid Khamushi, the, the benefit of silence. Uh, and then Ishq wa Jawani, love in youth. And then Zaf wa Piri, and then uh, old age and weakness. Uh, and then Ta'seer Tarbiyat, and then the effect of Tarbiyat. Because in our tradition, we have a thing called Ta'aleem wa Tarbiyat. You have Ta'aleem, education, and then you have Tarbiyat. Uh, in Tarbiya is that uh, adab, what we call in our tradition, to the teaching of adab. So the, the Gulistan was, uh, you know, translated early on into different languages. Uh, uh, one of the first languages that was translated was in French. And uh, the, the France, uh, in France, they, they, they learned Farsi. And, and uh, as a matter of fact, one of the people who translated it into a German and, and French, they actually knew fluent Farsi, Persian. And so when they translated into French in, uh, in the 1600s, almost 350, 30, 370 years ago, they translated into France. And the, the, the first chapter was uh, given to a person who was uh, a governor, government official in France, Lazar Carnot. And he... Uh, he fell in love with it because it's an advice to the king on how to run a, a government. And it's a beautiful advice. It's not, you know, now we have, you know, you have John Stuart Mill who has his ideology of how to run a government. So there's, 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 there's all these style of running the government. But Saadi has a style of running the government that is very ethical. And it's, it's uh, you know, the Persian, we have a proverb. They say, you know, do something that, when, you, when you're barbecuing, because all our proverb in Persia is about food, because we always eat. So uh, when you're barbecuing, do some, because the sikh traditionally wasn't made out of steel. It was made out of wood, right? The, 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 wood, the little uh, wooden ones. So they say, when you barbecue, make sure that the sikh doesn't burn and the kebab doesn't burn, right? So that balance is very important. And that's what he's doing. He's bringing this balance where he gives advice to the kings, and then he also gives advice to the to the to the uh, citizens, like right? because it's a two-way relationship, right? So he Lazar Karnat, he when he when he read this first chapter, he fell in love with Saadi. So he named his son Saadi. He named his son Saadi. Uh, his son was a genius. He was an engineer, and he died at an early age. Uh, some say twenty-five, some say thirty-two, but he died in a very early age in uh, in uh, thermodynamic. Uh, engine that you know I mean, there was no patent back then but you know that's his his invention uh you can even wikipedia that it will come you know just put thermodynamic engine it will come Saudi Qadrat. and it says inspired by the great sufi uh, muslim saint of of persia saadi shirazi the name so uh so then his he has another son he, he names him saadi as well he dies at the early age so his brother has a son named him Saadi because of the two sons that they lost and the amount of love they had for this book and for this man. This Saadi, Karnat, became the president of France from 1887 to 1894. So you have this man who inspired, his name is after a, a uh, spiritual master and a poet, Muslim poet. And there are so many, I, I once Googled Saadi Street and Saadi Avenue. All of these streets came in from France to Brazil because he was really a popular uh, per, uh, president. So uh, that they're named after him. Uh, 
So Gulistan was translated in uh, 1634, um, uh, the first time into other languages. And in, in, in uh, 1654, um, it was translated uh, into German in its entirety. And the person who translated, actually, he knew fluent Persian. He, he studied in Iran. He learned uh, Farsi. And then, um, 1848, uh, then another translation into uh, German. And all of these translations are, it's amazing, some rhymes, and, and, and they, it's, it's beautiful uh, based on the reviews that the, the, the people of that language did. Uh, the first Gulistan that was translated into English uh, by uh, Richard Burton was in 1888. So he translated it into English. Uh, but before that, it was translated as a, not as a full, just as chapter. As you know, there's eight different chapters, so some people, they uh, translated a few chapters from it. And uh, the first one was 1774, was by... Uh, Stephen uh, Sullivan, he translated into English in 1774, but not the full uh, translation. Anyways, this book has been, for the past almost 400 years, has been on the tongue of the people other than the, the Persian. Uh, they did, in, in uh, Ottoman Empire, they had it as a classical text. I know that in India, they actually read the Gulistan, and then, like, the, 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 the paper that I gave you guys, this paper... All of these poems were taught in India, not to the Muslims, even the non-Muslim schools. I, I, I met a Hindu, a Sikh lady in, in, in uh, one of my programs, and she said that she, me she had it memorized. She was in her 80s. She had half the whole thing memorized. And she read the whole poem from memory because I was six years old when I memorized it in India. She said in our school, they didn't teach it as a, a religious text. They taught it as a text of ethics to teach people ethics. Uh, so what happened is when, uh, when uh, Saadi passed away, for the next 100 years, everybody copied Saadi's style. So every book was in this style, uh, including the, there's a beautiful book, inshallah, one day I, I hope to teach the book, uh, it's called Baharistan uh, of Mullah Jami, Abdul Rahman Jami. Uh, his is probably the best one, but a lot of the people, they, I mean, I have a list of here, like two pages of list of books that I don't even know who they are, that they copied the style, but it was just like a lot of copycats, let's put it, that he started this new genre of, of how to do poetry. So, what we're going to do, inshallah, today, I wanted to go over this poem. Uh, people who didn't get it, they can pick this up. It's in here, brothers and sisters. This is from a book called Panch Kitab. The five is called, because there's five books in one. So the Panch Kitab is the first book we studied uh, after the Quran. And traditionally they made us memorize this, uh, the whole book. Uh, but bad memory, most of them are gone. But uh, this, this poem, uh, the first three poems are very important. Uh, because they talk about, um, they do talk about uh, things that are essential in our lives. So we'll do this and then inshallah, see where we go from here. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim, he starts the book with, with the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. And then he says, Karima bibakhshai bar halima ke hastim asiri kamande hawa. He starts the book by, the, by calling upon Allah. And this is one of the ways of, of, the, of the great uh, masters, spiritual masters. They always start their book with calling upon Allah. Uh, so he says, Karima, oh the most generous. Oh Karim, forgive us in the state that we are in. So he's not asking for forgiveness for my sins in the past, for this, for that. Karima, oh the most generous, forgive us. In the state that we are in. Whatever state we're in, we want forgiveness. Because in any state, you can use Allah's forgiveness. Even in your peak state of obedience, you can still use Allah's obedience. Because you can do better. There are people who are doing better than you, right? There's always room to be closer to Allah. One of the secret of this poem is the word karima. And this is why that book, the Panch Kitab, is also famous as the book of karima. Karim is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the one who gives, the generous one, right? 
But there's other names that Allah has. You could have used Rahima or the merciful, right? It would have rhymed the same, right? Uh, Malika. Any of the nine, most of the nine names fits in there. But why did he choose Karima? Karim, there are names of Allah that you ask, Allah gives you. Jawad. Like you say, Ya Allah, uh, I have difficulty, financial difficulty. Allah help me, you know, alleviate this. Ya Allah, I'm sick. Heal me. Allah will do that because you ask. He will respond to you, right? Karim is the one who gives without asking. Did you ever ask, Ya Allah, make my heart beat this many times every day? So I'm, you know, we don't ask for that. Ya Allah, make me do the breathing constantly when I'm sleeping. You don't ask for this stuff. Ya Allah, don't give me a headache. Ya Allah, we don't ask for these things. But Allah, He does it all the time. He just keeps giving to you, right? He keeps giving and giving Allah. Through this name, He gives without asking. So Sa'adi is so smart. He said, if he gives all these stuff without asking, how much would he give if he asked him through that name? How much would he give if he asked him through the name that he gives without even asking? So that's why I saying, so what does he ask for? The best thing you can ask for, forgive us in any state that I am. In any state that I am. Now he is going to qualify his first line with the second line. Why is he asking that? Because I'm a prisoner of, of my own nafs. I'm a prisoner. I know that. My reality is saying, I'm a prisoner of my own nafs. So I want your forgiveness in every state. Right? In every state that I am, I want your forgiveness. Because the nafs is like a rope that's gone around my th throat. And it's just dragging me like an animal towards the things that I don't want to go. Right? And uh, the poet said, he said, the great lovers, right, they take that rope off their neck and they put the rope of God in their neck. And that's what he said, you know, that, and then they let God take them anywhere he wants. Just take me anywhere you want, right? Because it's a rope, it's just let go, right? Let go to Allah. But he's saying, I still have the rope of my nafs around my neck and it's dragging me towards evil. So please, I want your forgiveness in every state of my life. Nadorim ghayras tu faryodras. Nadorim, we don't have, right? Ghayras tu, ghayr is except to you. And the reason why for God in Persian we use the word to. So in, in, in Persian, in the same way in Urdu we have, they say tum and then they say up, right? In Farsi, we say two, and then we say shoma. So, for example, my niece is here. She would never call me two. She would always say shoma because she's younger and I'm older, right? I can never call my older brother two because it's bad adab. I have to call him shoma as a sign of respect. But why do we call God two? He says, Nadorim ghayras two, Fariyadras. We don't have anyone except you, Fariyadras. Any Afghan wants to take a hint on that? Take a dab? No? The reason why, any? Yes? Well, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. But the reason why is because Shuma is always plural as well. So as a group of people, you say Shuma. You say that respect for someone. It's like the royal we, right? Like the king will say we, it's only one, right? We are delivering this. So because it has that plurality in it, they use the word two for God. So there is no, there is no ambiguity. It's Allahu Ahad. You know, قول هو Allah, Allah is one. So that's the reason why they use the word two yeah, for God. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. So there's not equivalent of an uh, uh, is, is that plural as well or no? Singular. No, it's singular, right? That's the difference. Yeah. Normal. Yeah, the, so the, in, in Persian, we, this is, it has the... the yeah, exactly. That's the reason, I think. That's the reason is because of the because of that uh, fear of plurality. So then he says, I don't have anyone except you to come to a rescue. Faryad ras is a very interesting word. Faryad is to shout for help. Like if you're getting drowned, la in the ocean, you just shout from the top of your lung. That's it. 
he's doing faryad, right? He's shouting, go, to, go help him. So he's saying, I'm shouting from the top of my lung, and I don't have anyone to come to my rescue except you. You're the only one who can rescue me. And, and this is in every situation, in your marriage situation, in your business, at your work, with your parents, with your friends, with your children, and everything you have issues, who are you going to go to? You're going to go to Allah. And if you do that calling, and this is the calling, a lot of people, you know, they say you should call like an orphan who has lost his mother and just desperately looking. And anyone that she sees with the same clothing grabs, mom, just grabs it and it's not even it. But that calling is what Allah loves. When you call in desperation, he will answer. Allah will always answer that. So he says, we don't have anyone but you to come to our rescue, right? Tui asiyan ra khata bakhsh bas. Tui, you are, ya Allah, asiyan, asi is Arabic. Any words in Farsi that has saad, da, taza is from Arabic. So all, any word that you see in Farsi that has those four letters, its origin is Arabic. So asi is an Arabic word, which means sinners, people of disobedience, you are the one, Tui, you are the one who forgives the Asi, who forgives the Asi, well, bas, period, right? Bas, khalas, finished. There's nobody else who can forgive, who can forgive except Allah, right? Negahdar mara zirahi khata. So then at the end of this one, he says, please, ya Allah, now he's doing iltija, he's asking, he's begging, please, ya Allah, Hold me, protect me, don't let me go on the path that is khata. Khata is, is, a, is a, obviously is an archery term when you miss the bullseye. They say you made khata. Khata is a mistake, right? Khata is also a sin. And sin is to mix, miss the mark as well, right? So you don't hit the bullseye. It, it's the same in, in the Christian and the Muslim. The same root, it's from the same root word. So he's saying, Tui asiyan ra khata baksh bas, Right? You are the only one. So now he's saying, Protect me from this path that is khata. This path that's not going to hit the bullseye. I want you, in the, in the 12 step program for the Alcoholic Anonymous, you say, why do you know that? I was, I was uh, helping a person uh, with, who was an, an, uh, someone who was going through that and, and I, I had to go through the 12 step to see what they're teaching. Uh, but anyways, one of the things is let go and let God. Let go and let God. Like you have to let go of that I am unable to do this. And this is why one of the things I hate about uh, corporate America, and I, I think it's, it's, so, it's, it's disgusting to see that in a Muslim organizations when people use the word I. I want this. I'm going to do this. I did this. Who do you think you are? Like how do you do it? Like, how does I do anything? If the Mashiach of Allah is not there, can you do anything? Why didn't the knife cut Ismail? He tried. He got the knife, put the sun down, trying to cut, but it's not cutting. Because you can't do it. If Allah, if Allah doesn't want it, you can't do it. Why didn't the fire burn him? It, they can't. It has to be the Mashiach of Allah in order for it to happen. So we always use the word we, and inshallah we will take care of this, we will do it. Like that should be the, the and it would also humble people. This word I, you know, it's just, it's just so weird for me to see that in the Muslim institutions as well. So he says, Please hold us, protect us from going on this path of khata. Khata dar guzar. And now at the end, he's being smart. And it's always good to be smart because, like, you know, they ask Abu Hanifa about the dua for the Kaaba, right? Because he was smart. I said, the, when you see the Kaaba for the first time, your first dua is accepted. Me and him, we made Umrah together with her too. So I always tell him, you know, what sh people like, ah, ah, you know, they ask for something. Allah, I want that job. And then, okay, you got the job or whatever. But they ask Abu Hanifa, what should we ask for that dua when we first see the Kaaba? Because, you know, that's the dua that is accepted. He said, ask Allah, Ya Allah, accept all my duas after this dua. So, 
that's smart, right? So all your du'as, you become, you know, the person, everybody will come to you, make du'a for me. So he's being very smart in the last line, intelligent, and he's saying, khata dar guzar. Can you just all my khata, all my mistake, all my sin, just put it aside and just delete them? And then give me reward instead. Because Allah changes khata into blessings. Allah does that. He can do it. Right? He can just, all. If, if you have remorse for a sin and you shed tears for that sin that you did, Allah will elevate you a rank so high that you can have got it through worship. But you did a sin and you remorse, the remorse is so bad that you just get, get, keep getting elevated. Yeah? So this is the one for Allah. Now, here's the secret of this poem. You'll get it then. The second one is in the praise of the Prophet And he says, He says, for as long as you have your tongue in your mouth, what's beloved to your heart is the praise of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And it's so interesting that they knew the psychology of the self, the spirituality of the self, that there's a connection between your tongue and your heart. What's a munafiq? What's the definition of a hypocrite in our tradition? A munafiq is the one who says on their tongue what's not in their heart. That's what they say, oh, it's a munafiq. He told me I'm so beautiful, and then when behind my back said I'm so ugly. That's a munafiq. It's a hypocrite. They say on their tongue what's not. In their heart, they don't think you're beautiful. But they say it to you, right? So a munafiq, he is saying here that if you want to know what your heart wants, is the praise of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That's all it wants. That's all what the heart Just If you do all day, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad in tibb al-qulubi wa dawaiha wa aafit al-abdani wa shifaiha wa nur al-absari wa diyaiha wa qut al-arwahi wa ghidaiha wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. You know, just the heart is like, give me more. Give me more. Because it's food for the heart, right? Give me more. It's joy. Just the name Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? So he said, for as long as you have your tongue in your mouth, in the way poets do, they make it so beautiful. He doesn't say, hey, just say praise of the Prophet. Everybody has their tongue in their mouth, right? All the time. So he's reminding you all the time, just do praise on the Prophet, sallallahu because that's what your heart wants. If you want, and happiness is in the heart. Habibi Khuda Ashrafi Anbiya. Now he's going to qualify why he said that. He is the Habib of God. Habibullah. Habibullah. You know, there was a, the, the Sahaba were sitting by the Hatim and they were talking. And one of them, they were talking about the other prophets. And one of them said, Subhanallah, Isa is Masihullah, Musa is Kalimullah. And Ibrahim is Khalilullah. And the Prophet ﷺ passed by and he heard it. He said, well, I'm a Habibullah. And I'm the Habib of Allah. And the Habib of Allah, the beloved of God, is also a friend. Is also the one he speaks to. Is also a Messiah. All of that is in the beloved. But a Khalil is not a Habib. A Kalim is not a Habib. The Maqam is not that Maqam. The one that you love is the highest. Right? The one that you love is the highest. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he says, he's Habibi Khuda. He's a Habib of God. And then he says, Ashraf al-Biya. He's the Ashraf. He's the most noble of all the prophets. One of the things I love about this poem, he doesn't say Ashraf al-Makhluqat. Ashraf al He doesn't say the, the best of human being. The best of creation. He said the best of the prophets. He doesn't even want to compare him to us. He doesn't, it's, it's an insult to compare him to us. He's just comparing him to all the infallibles, the prophets who are sinless. He said, amongst this elite group of people, the Prophet ﷺ, he is their Ashraf. He is their leader. Ya Imam al Rusli, Ya Sanadi, Anta Babullahi Muhtamadi, right? He is the Imam of the Messenger. He's the best. Who's the Imam? Who do we put forth as an Imam? The best. The one who knows the most Quran, the one who knows the has the most knowledge, the one the one that has the most ethics, the most the most the best akhlaq, right? And even in the Hanafi fiqh, the the last reason is the man who has the most beautiful wife. And why did Abu Hanifa put that in there? 
Because the one who has a beautiful wife, their eyes are not on the other people. They're, 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 they're not looking at other, at other people. Like even to that level of subtleties, right? So he says, Habibi Khuda Ashrafi Anbiya, Ke Arshe Majidash Brad Mutaka. And he says, Okay, do you want me to give you more qualification of who he is? The Arsh of God is his pillow. This is one of the most amazing things that, that anybody has ever written about the Prophet. This line. Muttaka is someone that you something you lean on. So I'm, this is like a muttaka right now. And muttaka is a pillow. Like usually people get a pillow put behind their back and they lean on. He said, what did he lean on? The Arsh of Allah on the night of Isra and Miraj. Right? He went to the Arsh of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, above the Arsh, with his shoes, with his sandals. That's why we put the na'al on our head, or on our heart. We have the na'al of, na'alain, you know, the, the shoe, the, the, sign, the symbol of the shoe of the Prophet sallam, on our head. Right? Na'ali ke bi afghan hamim markaba das poi, تاج سر سلطان شد تا باد چنین بادا he said uh, Ansari said do you want to know who the prophet is let me tell you who he is the mark that remained from his shoes became a crown on the head of the kings the Muslim kings they were kufis with the sandal of the prophet on their head he said that's the mark of his shoes he said, that's who he is. And may it remain like that for eternity. Insha'Allah. So he's saying, let me tell you who he is. So you don't tell me why I'm asking you to praise him with your tongue all the time. Because the arsh of Allah was his pillow. Like he, he was above, he went above the arsh. Then he says, Savari jahangir yakron buraq ke bigzasht as qasr nili rawaq. He said he wrote this Burak. Now, one thing about the Burak is very interesting. That a lot of people think because it had wings and it was flapping probably and going from Mecca to, to Jerusalem. No. Sadi explains it how the Burak went. He said the Burak put his hand forward like a, you know, whoosh. you know how the deers, they cross over a fence. They put their hands forward. He said he put his hands forward and in one hop went to Jerusalem. Just in one half. It wasn't a struggle, a flap. The wings was just decoration. That's what it was. It's just decoration, just to make it beautiful for our Prophet. And then he says, big zash as qasr nili rawak. It went through this qasr, this palace, with plethora of shades of blue lights. Now, if this is not a karamat, I don't know what it is. This is Saadi uh, was born in year uh, 1201 probably. Around 1201. Some say 1204. And they died in 1299. He was around the same time as Mawlana Rumi. But if you look at the Hubble telescope photos of the, this, the heavens, it's all shades of blue lights. And it does look like a castle lit up. Now, how did he know that? Like, it's just, it's amazing, like, the, these, these poets. So he's telling us that this is the man that went through the cosmos, went to the Arsh of Allah. He's Habib of Allah. He's the, the best of Allah's uh, messenger. This is why I'm asking you. So if you read this poem backward, all right, Always, when you read a poem forward, try to read it backward as well. Read it backward, it takes you step by step back to the point. So, it will, it will actually help you understand it. That Okay, this is who he is. He went to the Arsh. He wrote the, the Barak. He went through the, the seven heaven. He's, he's the best of Allah. Now, praise him with your tongue all the time. Because your heart would be at ease and at peace. Alright, so, for the sake of time, uh, we'll do the last one. I usually do each one in, in an hour, hour and a half uh, session with the students, but this is an online session, so we're just trying to make it short and brief, and I go too much into detail of the language. So the next one, the last one is the nafs. Now, khatab ma nafs. Khatab is from a word like we give khutbah, you know, khatib comes and gives a khutbah, right? So the first one is munajat. It's a munajat 
in for, for in 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 in, uh, in the dargah of mujibu da'wah, the one who accepts your manajat, your da'wah. And the second one is in praise of the Prophet. Now the third one is khutab ba nafs, a lecture, a khutbah to the nafs, right? Because he knows you can't be nice to the nafs. People who are nice to their nafs, they're the, all those people who destroy themselves. Chill soul, umre azizat gozash, mazaji tu az hal tifli nagasht. Forty years of this precious life that Allah gave you has passed. And 40 is used as a symbolism here for a great portion of your life, right? Because they say traditionally by 40 you should be really set of what you're doing because after that it's just, it's just a continuation of what you accomplished. Forty years of your life passed, but your infantile state hasn't changed. You're still a child. Not in a fitra nature. He's not talking about fitna nature. He's talking about childish nature. Oh, I want this, I want that. I want this, I want that. Right? Like in other words, you're still milk, drinking milk, and you haven't gone to say, hey, I gotta, I gotta get off the breast, get off the milk. Start eating, so you know, just that growth hasn't come to you. You're still a child, right? Why? All your life, these 40 years, right? What did you do? Your companionship was your hawa and your hawas. That was your companion. Desires and passion, parties, just feeding the nafs, giving the nafs whatever it wants. Not even for a moment, you could have done something nice, something good, something beneficial, something rewarding. Not even for a moment, you, you couldn't even take a moment off to do that. All your life, you did this. Not even for one moment, you could have done that. You could have, because what he's saying, there's a taste in virtue and ethics. There's a taste. If you, if you, if you get that taste in your mouth, right? Like Iqbal says, Sajdeh ishq ho to ibadat me mazaat hai. Right? If Sajdeh is done with love, you can taste your ibadah, your worship. Khali Sajdeh me to dunya hai basa karti hai. Tasteless Sajdeh is everybody can do that. Empty meaning this one. So that's what he's talking about. That if you do virtuous action, there's a taste that will enter that you will not do the other, you will not go back to sin. And a lot of people who sin and disobey, they never really tasted the beauty of this deen. They never tasted it. They never tasted How many people have prayed night prayer where everybody was asleep and they kept praying until they broke down? And if you do that and you tell me you're going to sin after that, you come and hold me responsible. Because if you do that, one night for Allah, it will change your life for eternity. I'm telling you, it will change your life. I know people that their entire life changed with one night. But they stood in prayer and they cried and they talked to Allah until they found themselves. And when you find yourself, you find God. God is in the heart of every human being. But if you're lost yourself, right? Like the bumper sticker, don't follow me, I'm lost. If you're lost yourself, like, how are you going to find God? Right? There's a beautiful story that Saadi has about a man who wants to go to Hajj. And uh, he's going, and this man asks him, say, where are you going? He says, I'm going to Hajj. And then he keeps, he keeps traveling. And then the man shouts at him. He says, Tarsam Narasi Bakaba e Arabi. He said, Oh, Arab man, I don't think you will ever make it to, Mac, to, to the Kaaba. He turns out, goes, Why do you say that? He said, Kin rahke tumi rewi ba Turkestanas. Because this is the path to Turkey. You're not going to Mecca, you're going to Turkey. <laughs> to Turkestan, right? Turk so, in any way, the point is that you have to know yourself, find yourself, and then you will see the, the light of God. And then he says, Which line did we do? The second? We did the second? We did the one. Okay. Chill, Saul, Umra, Zephyr. Hama ba hawa, hawa sohti, dami ba masale, napar dohti. Makun take bar umra na poyadar. Now, the, in Persian, he says nakun or makun is the same thing. The noon in the meme has the same, it's negation. Uh, don't 
Takia is again from the same word mutaka is to lean. Right? Takia. We say takia. I'm doing takia. He said, don't, don't lean. Don't lean on this life. Because life has no pillar to lean on. Generally, like if you go to a masjid with all the pillars, everybody goes lean on the pillars, right? We Everybody loves leaning on the pillars, especially in Medina and Mecca. And you get tired, you go lean against a pillar. He said, don't lean because it has no pillar. You will fall into this abyss. In other words, be always upright and vigilant, right? Qul amantu billah, thumma staqim. Say, I believe in Allah and then be upright, be vigilant, right? So, ma kun bar umrana upayadar. In other words, don't be, don't fall into sleep. Don't relax. You always have to be like the rabbits. The ears are going always because predators are coming from every side. You have to protect yourself. Mabosh ayman az bazi ruzakar. Never ever feel safe from the great game of life. And that is where everybody falls into. Where they think, oh, I'm good, alhamdulillah. Nothing, you know, it's like I mentioned this story before. There's a man that came and, and, and I give him advice. Don't go. Uh, they're going to, to a city, of a sin city, a place where a lot of sin happened and gambling. So I don't want to even mention the name. And he was really into the deen, you know, beard and the whole shebang. And he said, I'm going to go with my friends. I'm going to do tabligh and I'm going to do da'wah to them. So where are you going? He said, I'm going to this city. I said, oh man, that's a bad sign. I wouldn't go to that city. I, it's, it's, you have travel of ma'asiyah, you know. It's, it's ma, this is a travel of sin. You, 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 you're not, so, we're not allowed in Sharia to go places of sinfulness, right? You know, people. So in any case, I told him, I said, don't go. Said, no, 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 no. Alhamdulillah, my iman is good. My, you know, I, I, I studied, you know, I did, I went overseas for a year, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to go. I said, what are, who is it? So we got a big van, this 15 passenger van, all my old friends are going. I said, man, 1 versus 14 is bad odds. And I even told him, even in jihad you can run away, it's one, one, one against four. <laughs> but you're going against a, a big odds. He said, no, 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 my iman is out. Of and then I didn't see him for like a while. After a few months, I saw him, beard and everything is gone. I see the tattoos coming out. Like, oh man, what happened? And I knew I, I knew exactly what was going to happen because the odd was, you know, you don't want to go against those odds. So he's saying, don't feel safe from the great game of life. It will, tr- it will find something to just drop into this abyss. And you will, once you fall into it, it's really hard to come back. And people can come back by making toba, but it's just you get exhausted after a while and people go on a path and they, most of them, they don't come back. But inshallah. So, so now, Look at the sequence of this. There's two ways of looking at it. So he's starting the poem with God's way of looking at things. God is telling you, listen, ask help for me. Right here, ask me. God is saying, ask me for help. I'm the one who can take care of you. You have issues in your house. You have issues with your parents. You have issues at your work. You have issues with your health. Ask me. I'll take care of you. But ask like a child, crying, right, in desperation. Rumi has a story, he says that, uh, uh, that about, a, about a man uh, he, who owes a lot of money, this, this alim, the sheikh, he owes, a lot, he owes everybody money from the sheikh, he just keeps borrowing. And he borrows, and people are like, hey, sheikh, can we get the money? And he's a righteous sheikh. Like he's a good man. He just keeps borrowing and then he makes food, feed people. He, keeps, he has no money. He's, he has a line of people, Sheikh, can we have our money? Can we have money? And then it gets kind of really bad and people are like, hey, you, what kind of Sheikh are you? And then people start calling him name. And, and, then, so, and then this guy comes, this, uh, this kid comes, like six, seven-year-old kid. He's selling cookies. He goes, oh, he's selling cookies. I'll buy all your cookies. He said, really? He gets all the cookies. He, gets, he eats it. He gives the people. He goes, well, he goes, man, I don't have any money. I'll give it to you. Just give IOU, right? And this kid start crying. He's like, I'm an orphan. I'm, you know what's going to happen when I get home? Please. And he keeps crying and crying. Anyways, he's just like, he just was just, what can I do? I have no money. Look at all these people in line. Like, you know, you stand in line next to them. And then, and then this person comes. He goes, oh, you Sheikh Sonsi? He goes, yeah. He goes, oh. 
I have this gold bag of gold coin for you, somebody said. And he goes, oh, okay, thank you very much. And he gives all the people there. And everybody's gone happy. I go, what was the secret of it? He said, when you ask God, you have to do it to a degree. It's like a, a pot that you put fire and fire until it boils over. He said, it was the cry of that child that boiled it over. And Allah sent the, the rescue. Because Allah knows my intention. I'm feeding fuqara. I'm feeding people. I'm not keeping any money for myself. But it had to be that. I had to take it to that level. And we ask Allah, but it's sometimes when you just really are desperate when you ask. And I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes, people who went to Umrah with us. And they, had, they went with like such difficulties. And I, and I know like a, a woman went with us. She said, uh, you know, her son couldn't have children. And they were married for over a, uh, over a decade. And uh, she said, the only reason I'm going is just to ask Allah. And just, I said, just, just go to the, 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 the cabin and just hold on. And she went and she held on and she was crying for hours. And she said, you know. And then so uh, two years later, they went back with the child and the son and the daughter-in-law. And as, as to give gratitude that, you know, Allah, thank you for that. But it has to be real. You know, it can't be this fake lip service, Ya Allah, you know, give me this, give me that. So he starts from that and then is saying, you know, my prophet, that's my beloved, send prayers upon him. And then is saying, listen, you want to be successful? You have to take care of your nafs. You have to control your nafs. Now, our perspective, we, this nafs, we look from down up. We got to take care of this nafs first. And then, once you have the nafs in control, I got to praise the Prophet. Once you have that, then it's just, it's a, you go through this because all the doors have been shut to God except the door of the Prophet. That's the only way you can get to God. The time of Jesus was through Jesus. At the time of Moses was through Moses. At the time of Ibrahim was through Ibrahim. But now, until the Yom Al-Qiyamah, is through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa taala. khairan. And uh, I don't have my uh, for the. Uh, let me see if there's any text. So alhamdulillah, I think we're done. Inshallah, if there's any any questions from here or online, I don't have my uh, my laptop next to me. Maybe Sidi Munir can send me a text. Clear? Was it clear? Okay. Yeah? All right. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidil Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilahi illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Wa ala asri inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-lazina amilu wa amilu salihat. Wa tawasu bil haq wa tawasu bil sabr. Zakallah khairan. Inshallah ta'ala. Next Saturday we'll start the actual gulistan of Sa'adi with the Dibacha. Inshallah.